But now to a shock poll into attitudes among British Muslims. And less than a quarter believe Hamas committed murder and rape in Israel on October the 7th. And here are the main findings of a survey of a thousand people. And the headline figure is that just 24 percent of people think Hamas carried out those despicable acts six months ago. Today is the anniversary. 46 percent of those polled feel sympathy towards Hamas. 52 percent want to make it illegal to show a picture of the Prophet Muhammad. Of course, that's what drove the Batley Grammar School teacher into hiding over three years ago. And now I'm joined by Dr. Taj Hagi, who's the founder of the Oxford Institute for British Islam. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Hagi. What do these what do these findings say to you? It seems to indicate a British Muslim population with views that are simply out of touch completely with those of the rest of the British public. Yeah, this is a very dreadful news. Uh, not not only is it distressing and disturbing, but it's also very dangerous. And the point here is that you know um, this poll, if you take it to be accurate, uh, it's uh, uh, it's been done by. Uh, it has consulted British Muslims, mostly born in this country. Now, if they are born in this country, educated in this country, how could they have such a view? Now, it doesn't matter on which side of the aisle you come come regarding uh, the Israel-Palestine question. The, que- the, the point here is when innocent civilians are killed from either side, isn't it right that one should condemn and, and, uh, and uh, denounce this? This is the issue. And I think this is... Uh, this is a wake-up call for Muslims. But remember, in, in uh, with 9/11, there was the same issue. Uh, we find that Muslims uh, didn't want to believe it. This is type of blind loyalty to their own uh, perspectives, and I think uh, it's important that uh, Muslims should be called out for this. And it's important mm-hmm. also that uh, uh, the general public should help Muslims understand that they should be prepared to condemn what is wrong. A wrong can never be made a right. What Hamas did is unspeakable, it's atrocious, it's a savagery, it's brutality, it's barbarism, and we should label it as such. But by the same token, we should also look at the other side of the coin. This country has for years and years just given Israel a blank check. And we really need to uh, take stock of this. Even the, the foreign secretary has said British support shouldn't be unconditional. And I think this is a wake-up call as well for the general public that, yes, we should try to be honest brokers in Palestine and Israel and not just support one side uh, unthinkingly, uncritically. OK. OK, bring it back to British shores. Very concerned that 52% of British Muslims feel it's not acceptable. They want to make it illegal, in fact, to show a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. That, of course, is what drove the Batley Grammar School teacher into hiding, where he remains three years to this day in fear of his and his family's life. We have rules in this country around freedom of expression. Why are 52% of the Muslim population accepting that? Absolutely. And that's why, for example, we're having a big conference in, at Oxford University in July on Islam for liberty and free speech. So this idea that you can't show the Prophet Muhammad's photo or image of him is nowhere to be found in the Quran. This comes, like many other uh, crazy uh, rules and regulations, from the Sharia. And the Sharia is not divine law. Sharia is, Sharia is medieval opinion masquerading as divine law. But most Muslims are not aware of this. So they have no clue that the Quran itself doesn't uh, ban this stuff. And why should we in this country not be advocates and proponents of free speech? Because if there's no free speech in this country, then what future is it for all of us? Because you and I are free to express our opinion as long as it's not a hateful and inciting of citing violence and that is the cornerstone of british democracy and if these muslims my co-religionists if they wish to live in this country they need to abide by the laws of this country including free speech including if someone wants to show a photo of the prophet muhammad someone wants to do this or that you do not run them out of town you, you do not uh, 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 condemn them uh, uh, mm. uh, and so forth what's also important is that that 
Muslims need, need to understand that they cannot bring their imported theology from Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, or whatever, and think that they can imp- impose and implement it in this society. That's why our organization, our institute, is promoting something called British Islam. We want an Islam that's rooted in and relevant in, in this society. It should be integrated, it should be inclusive, and it should be indigenous. It should be part and parcel of this landscape. It's not some sort of a foreign import. And that's why it's very important that we should speak out against what is happening currently, uh, both in Palestine and also in, in, in this society. Dr. Hage, I think a lot of people will agree with that. It sounds very laudable, but is that practical? It says in the same body of research here that only 23% of British Muslims, Islam, um, should be declared, say it's undesirable to have Islam as the national religion. Presumably that means that the vast majority think Islam should be the yes, dominant because, religion in the UK. Yeah, because they have been brainwashed, programmed and conditioned by the Islamic clergy that there can't be a separation between state and church, between state and, uh, and, and religion. And this is not what Islam is about. Islam talks about freedom and pluralism and inclusivity and democracy. The mullahs, the, the bearded the priests, they talk about intolerance and, uh, 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 and uh, all types of uh, fascist uh, interpretations of the faith. OK, thank you very much. Excellent dose of common sense. Dr. Taj Hargi, who's the founder of the Oxford Institute for British Islam. Thanks for joining us on the show.